Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we've got another neat Chromebook to take a look at. This one from Samsung. This is their Galaxy Chromebook Plus, and it's a 15-inch device, but is very lightweight. In fact, it only weighs about two and a half pounds, or 1.17 kilograms, and it's very thin as well. And the price is pretty reasonable too. So we're going to take a closer dive into this laptop and what it's all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from Google. When we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this Chromebook is all about. Now the price point on this comes in at $699. This is a Chromebook Plus, which means it offers features not found in your typical lower-priced Chromebook. I did a full video on Chromebook Plus not too long ago, so you can get the full extent of everything that it comes with in that video. But in a nutshell, you get a lot of neat software AI features that help make your workflow more efficient. And you will continue to get updates on the laptop through 2032. They plan to add a lot more to Chromebook Plus over time. But I should note that this machine is only getting eight years of support while most new Chromebooks get 10 years. So after June of 2032, this notebook is no longer updated. Now you also get a one year subscription to Gemini Advanced from Google. That is their ChatGPT competitor. And with that, you get two terabytes of cloud storage. And again, that is for a full year from the date of activation. What I really like about this one beyond its super lightweight design here is the display. It is 15.6 inches. It is OLED, so it's got very nice deep blacks, a really nice contrast ratio, great color. It meets all of the standards for DCI P3, so you will be able to use this in uh, some professional environments as well because the color will be accurate on it. It's got about 400 nits of brightness. It runs at a 1080p resolution and all in, it's nice to see an OLED uh, on something at this price point. It has an Intel Core 3 processor, a 100U, which is a Raptor Lake R chip. It has eight gigabytes of DDR5 RAM and 256 gigabytes of UEFS storage. The RAM and storage are not upgradable on this. That is typical across most Chromebooks. So what you buy is what you will have for the lifespan of the laptop. I really like the build quality. It's all metal. As I mentioned, two and a half pounds or 1.17 kilograms. I also like how well balanced it is here as well. As you can see, even though it's so lightweight, the keyboard stays put when I lift the display up. And one thing I forgot to mention on the display side is that there is no touch capability here. So you will be uh, just having to use the keyboard and trackpad for entry. And on that note, we can take a look at the keyboard and trackpad here. This is a backlit keyboard. It types very nicely. The key travel is a little shallow given how thin it is. So that's the one thing that took some getting used to, but otherwise it's pretty nice to work with here. They were able to cram a number pad in here, but you don't have your operators here on the side. So you have to go up for the plus, the minus, and the division here. The power button is recessed a bit, so you don't hit it by accident, but it does not have any type of biometrics on board. So no fingerprint reader, nor any uh, facial recognition. But the keyboard again is pretty decent here. I also like the trackpad quite a bit. It's nice and large and very accurate and very much in line with some of the other uh, Samsung PCs that I've looked at. They did make a change to the keyboard here, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, this key now says caps on it. Typically Chromebooks didn't have a caps lock key, but it's also a smart key. So when you push this thing, it will give you some contextual things that uh, are suggested based on what you're doing on the laptop at the time. And again, I'll show you how that works when we go into the performance section here. As for ports, you get a couple of them on here. You have two USB-C ports. These are full service ports, so you can do power, display, and data devices. This is also how you charge the laptop. And I was able to also use the HDMI port here to get three external displays running simultaneously along with the internal display. So you can have four separate displays running off of this, and these can all output 4K60 too. So you've got a lot of display output options when you get back to your office. And then on the other side here, you have a micro SD card slot that can augment the onboard storage. You can keep that card in there all the time for additional storage space. 
Here you've got a USB-A port that's really good for uh, hooking up keyboards and mice, and then you've got a headphone microphone jack over there. I'm going to pop it back open here because there is one last thing to talk about on the hardware side, which is the webcam. It's a 1080p webcam. It looks pretty good here, a little on the darker side. They do have some Chromebook Plus features to enhance the image, like this artificial light. You can also do blurred backgrounds at lighter or heavier amounts, and of course you can add in images as well if you'd like to do that. And all of those camera effects are at the OS level, so this will work across any application that uses the webcam. And all of those features are located down in the corner here on the OS side when you are using the machine. So why don't I log back in now and let's see how it performs. All right, so why don't we start off with some web browsing here. We'll visit the nasa.gov homepage like we usually do. And as you can see, things render in here very, very quickly. So there's really no delay or lag here. Everything is immediate and responsive. You do get Wi-Fi 6 on board, so you will have some very good Wi-Fi performance out of this as well. A little bit earlier, I took a look at YouTube and I ran a 1080p 60 video off of my YouTube channel. And as you can see here, we didn't have much in the way of drop frames, maybe a couple of them as things started up, but after that, it all settled back down again. So all in a very good browsing experience. One thing I will mention here though, and I bring this up every time, is that if you are watching services like Netflix, the best way to watch them is through the web browser and not through the Android version. So you will see, and we'll talk about this in a minute, the ability to go into the Google Play Store and install apps like Disney Plus and Netflix that run on the Android side, but many of those apps won't run the video at the highest resolution. So if you're watching Netflix, for example, the browser is going to look a lot better than the app will. And hopefully at some point that will be something they improve inside of Chrome OS, but right now the browser is the best way to consume your media. And on version 3.0 of the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 17.7. That is a very good score and very much in line with some of the higher end devices we have looked at here on the channel recently. And of course, that was evident in how fast everything felt as we were browsing the web. Now, I did want to take a second and just show you what this button does and a few other Chromebook Plus features. So right now, I'm on a web browsing page. And if I hit the key here, what I will get is a contextual menu that is based on what I've been doing inside of the browser here. It's going to try to figure out what you might need to get access to next. So for example, I've got uh, this solar flare aimed at Earth, which is our current tab, but I can also go back to something that I had put into my Google Drive a little bit earlier. This was the video I took from the webcam. If I hit it again here, you can see that I can also make a new Google Doc or Google Sheet uh, right here without having to navigate anywhere else. Now, right now I'm in a Google document, and if I jump back over here and hit the key, I will have some slightly different options here to choose from. So for example, now, it is showing me the Help Me Write option, which uses AI to help you better compose what you are working on. And this, again, will give you different things based on what circumstances you are currently engaged in. Now, if I select the text here that I've got on screen, one other neat feature of Chromebook Plus is that you get this option to refine things. And what I could do here is have it elaborate on my bullet points. So what it's going to do is look at what I've got there it's going to go out to Gemini here and give us some suggestions for how we can elaborate these bullet points a little better. So you've got all this stuff baked in and these are all Chromebook Plus features that you can summon at any time that you won't find on some of the other Chromebooks out there. Now, as far as gaming is concerned, you do of course have access to the Google Play Store where you can find a lot of Android games that you might run on your phone or tablet that are also available here. One issue, of course, is that you don't have a touch display on this device, so if the game doesn't support a game controller, it might be a little difficult to control, but there are a lot of games that work with the controller. So a little bit earlier, I loaded up Minecraft. This is the Android version of Minecraft, and it runs great on here. Roblox runs okay as well, so there's a lot of stuff out there that you should be able to find on the Android App Store that's compatible with game controllers and can work quite well. One other thing you can do on this particular Chromebook, because it has an Intel processor, 
is install a new feature of Chrome OS that will get Steam onto your Chromebook. So if you go over to your little start menu here and type in Steam, it will give you the option to make that installation. And I've got Steam installed on here already. Now I did try to load a few games up and play them. You only have eight gigs of RAM on this, which is a bit of a limiting factor, but I was able to get No Man's Sky here to work at 1080p at the lowest settings at around 20 to 25 frames per second. Not great, but playable. And I, if I went down to 720p, I could squeeze about 30 frames per second out of it. So it is actually possible to load up some PC games on here and play them, just not all that well. But older games like Half-Life 2 and others should actually run quite well on this hardware. And even some newer stuff that isn't all that demanding, like this game I've been playing a lot of called Iron Meat, uh, which ran at a full 60 frames per second at 1080p. So you could run some emulators, you can run some retro-inspired games like this, along with older PC titles through Steam and have a pretty good experience with it. You are, of course, limited by the storage here, the RAM, and the processor, but it is better than what we've seen out of Chromebooks in the past. And on the Android version of the 3D Mark Wildlife Benchmark test, we got a score of 8,269 on the regular version of that test and 1,745 on the extreme version, which is much more demanding. As you can see, this new Core 3 processor lines up pretty close with what we've seen out of Chromebooks powered by i3 processors over the last couple of generations. So no big performance bump here for this level of Chromebook, but still capable of doing some casual gaming. Now, I wasn't all that crazy, though, about the speakers on this one. They are downward firing, so their quality will shift based on what surface the laptop is resting on. They're not very loud, and there isn't much of a range of sound. They are pretty flat uh, to my ears. Probably fine for a conference call, but if you're watching movies or listening to music, headphones, I think, are going to be important on this one. Battery life is pretty good. If you keep the display brightness down and stick to basic tasks, you should be able to get about 10 hours of battery life out of this, maybe a little bit more. If you are gaming or running the display at a high brightness level, that of course will negatively impact your battery life, but it is enough to get through the day. And again, I love how nice and portable this is. One last thing to take a look at is the Linux compatibility. So every Chromebook has the ability through its settings to install a Linux environment that you can see here. So you can run your favorite command line applications and do all sorts of Linux-based development, Python, whatever you want to throw on here, you can get running on this device. And there is a wealth of open source software here. I've got the LibreOffice suite installed, which is a locally running Microsoft Office equivalent type of software here. As you can see, it springs to life very quickly. All of the files that you save through this are stored locally and not in the cloud. So it's actually possible through this Linux environment to turn your Chromebook into a pretty useful Linux-based laptop. And what's nice is they isolate the Linux stuff from the rest of the system, so you really can't screw anything up. It is a great way to learn Linux and other Unix-like operating systems, and it's all here ready to be used, and it performs very nicely on this hardware. So all in, I think this is a very nice Chromebook. The build quality is excellent. I really like how lightweight it is for a 15.6 inch device. Two and a half pounds, you've got that nice OLED display here, all very nicely constructed and well balanced and uh, really one of the nicer Chromebooks that I have seen in quite a while. That is gonna do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.